Hello, my name is Matthew Wynn, and this is John J. Lodge. We usually meet in White Plains, New York. Um, I'm happy to have people here for a presentation by worshipful Michael LaRocco. He is a past master of Lindbrook, Massapequa, number 822. And uh, you meet in Rockville Center, right? That's correct, yes. Um, and uh, I've known Michael for a couple of years. He reached out to me to, with some just friendship and good brotherly advice. And since then I've gotten to know him, especially at some of these uh, appendant body things. He's doing some very interesting things with the Scottish Rite Valley of Rockville Center. Um, but let me just move on and present Michael LaRocco. Thank you, Warsh Lasta. Brothers, can you see a full screen? Yeah. Okay, good. But we we see uh, we see your Zoom toolbar up there. The Zoom toolbar. Yeah. You see something that says slide two also. No, no, no. I would you say just go ahead. Okay. Yeah. If you see uh, a whole bunch of. Uh, all, all the boxes of every box nope. of all of us. Okay, good. All right. Um, so, thank you very much, Worshipful Master, for inviting me to do this lecture. It's always uh, a great honor to be asked to do a lecture. You know, I, I guess a part of me, for a very long time, as you all can remember, I've always been a seeker, and I've always tried to figure things out and try to find out the deeper meanings for life, and. I think on some level, when I was joining Freemature, I was hoping for some kind of different perspective on, let's call it enlightenment, let's just say. And uh, and maybe I thought it'd be some kind of uh, help with material stability so that I could help, you know, strengthen my uh, providing for my family. And and so be right before I came into the craft, uh, maybe about a year before that, I had uh, I was going through a rough time, and then I went through a spiritual awakening, a shift that really kind of changed everything for me. And um, opportunities started to come back to me, and I started to come out of a difficult situation. And I joined Freemasonry, and you know, when I was going through the degrees, I didn't really catch and see a lot of the depth um, in them. I thought they were very inspiring. They were really great. And I, I just kind of concluded that, you know, I'm not going to find enlightenment or, uh, you know, material stability here. But I, I kind of really like the brothers in the lodge. And I really, I really kind of like being a part of this. And so what happened was eventually on Saturday, there was a, a Royal Arch Festival outdoors where they did all four degrees in one day. When I got to the Holy Royal Arch degree, I, I was really blown away. And I asked myself the question, maybe, maybe enlightenment is here. Maybe this is what I was hoping it to be. And then finally, when I went to the Scottish Rite and it went to the 14th degree, my head almost popped off my shoulders because I started to realize that all the depth and all the um, different perspective to enlightenment was indeed here. And I met brothers that were very deeply into the philosophy, into the esoteric, into the spiritual aspect of the fraternity. It just the, the, the knowledge was unbelievable. So I, I started to um, realize the depth of the first three degrees. There was there, then when, when we're doing degrees over and over again, I started to recognize a lot of the symbols and started to see the deeper meaning for it. So I would say that, you know, in my case, in my experience, going through the Royal Arch and the Scottish Rite woke me up to something that made me to see how deep our first three degrees really are. And even though I was already committed to my lodge, it gave me a, a definitely a different, deeper dimension to devote myself to Freemasonry. And some of the things that I've, that I've noticed in the line progression, when you're steward and you're moving up to marshal, and, you know, uh, masses of ceremonies and then finally deacons and wardens and then finally the master of the lodge, I started to realize that there was different things to learn, that this wasn't really only about reading and thinking about very, very deep, sublime symbols and esoteric stuff. And a lot of this stuff had to do with how we interact with each other. And 
I don't know if any brother understands this term, but I kind of feel that Freemasonry is a psychodrama. Psychodrama is a, a method of therapy where people led by a, facil a therapist that's facilitating it will act out what's going on inside them and ask people to play certain parts so they can work out certain emotional issues they might have. Um, and so what I mean by that is that, you know, in Freemasonry, when we're going through the line, the, the, there was things that were coming up for me that would never came up if I didn't come up and go to Freemasonry. I didn't know maybe I had a little bit of an issue with authority. I didn't know uh, how to deal with certain things. And it's just like you learn something different from each office as you're going through it. it it's literally, in my opinion, a self-improvement system in itself where um, I, I kind of feel like the lodge is generating either business owners or, or civil servants, where it's not many people, unless they're like CEO of very large companies or a congressman, would get the type of experience to, to interact and master and to lead men in such a way uh, unless they became a Freemason. So I think Freemasonry allows men to really shape themselves and edify themselves in extraordinary ways they would not normally have access to in ordinary lives that maybe much less, more, more few men really have access to. So one of the examples I want to talk about is I was also involved in a men's leadership group. And they used to have a saying that as a man does in one thing, he does in everything. And there would be a situation where someone would call, or we would go to an American Legion to help them cheat rock the basement because they had a flood. And that would be our, 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 our charity work, right? And so they would break off into groups and the guys doing the sheet rocking, they had to have a lead, they had to have a captain, have a, have a second. And the group was supposed to own that success. And a regional guy would come over to them and tell them, he'd find the captain on his hands and knees hammering away and everyone standing there with his, with his hand, hands in the pocket and the second yelling out orders uh, to everybody or complaining. And the regional guy would come over to him and tell the captain to stand up. And he tell him, he says, what are you doing? And he says, well, you know, these, these, these jerks don't listen to me, so I'm just going to do it myself, right? So he would ask him, how else does that show up in your life? And he said, it doesn't. It only happens here. And then one of the other teammates would say, no, in the group, he kind of talks about that. Everybody at work does the same thing, and his family does the same thing. This is, this is you know, an issue for this guy. He doesn't know how to enroll men into his cause. He just does, goes it alone all the time. And so they would tape his hands closed. And then the second, they would say, you were supposed to own, you were supposed to keep his details and own his success. What were you doing? You know, and they would tape his mouth closed. And then they would, they would kind of use everything that we had to take a much deeper look inside ourselves and how we interact with other people and how it affects our lives. How we're depriving our families and our communities and our society of the things we haven't learned to unblock or master yet. And so, I started to see Freemasonry as this exact same way. Sometimes when people don't get along, you know, sometimes the most enlightening thing to do is rolling up your sleeves and going in the kitchen. And sometimes it's just knowing when to call up a brother and ask him, you know, if he needs help and ask for help. And so I started to realize that this is much deeper and from all different angles, really fantastic. The degrees in a way, they kind of generate, each degree kind of has a different vibration of consciousness. And there's a, there's a belief that the secret password to each degree, okay, gives you entrance to the consciousness of that degree. And so what's happening is as we go through the degrees in Freemasonry, it's really raising our vibrations and it's really kind of magnifying our, our, our desire for virtue and it's increasing the standards in our life. I, I don't think anyone can really go through the degrees of Freemasonry without feeling like they're becoming a better man and totally being inspired and becoming a better man. And so, like I said, the passwords, uh, you know, are supposed to really help us and edify that, you know. Also, you know, Albert Pike believed that in the Scottish degrees of what they call the larger perfection fourth to the 14th degree, that they each represented the uh, sephira of the Kabbalah tree of life, and that 
the passwords of those degrees actually give you entrance into each of those degrees, each, each of those sakura, all moving towards more light until you've collected all the light you can and you reach the Heavenly Father. And so, again, not sure if that's true, but that's what Pike had said. And I could tell you that when you go, I haven't been through a degree in Freemasonry that didn't totally uh, inspire me and feel like it raised my vibrations. You know, in this, in the Northern Masonic jurisdiction, in the Scott Detroit, they, they have these main core values, reverence for God, devotion to country, integrity, this tolerance and service to humanity. And probably service to humanity is probably the, the highest station, the highest office anyone can have in their life. Carl Jung, not a Mason. He wrote a book, Psychology and Alchemy. Very, very thick, terse book. There's courses that give an introduction. Yeah, just the introduction, a course. And in some point in the book, he mentions that the great psych, he was a great psychologist, right? He would have to cease analysis, psychoanalysis with a, with a client. And he would have to use symbols to access the, the archetypes in the collective unconscious. And so I just thought, this reminds me so much of masonry that the way we teach is an allegory and symbols so that every man could access his own subconscious from the same thing we're viewing at without changing his religion. And so all men from all religions and all cultures and all countries can come and see the same degrees and experience the same symbols. And it's almost like a hologram. What's inside them connects to what they're seeing in the degrees. And it could mean something very different for every person that see it. You know, it, it often means different things to me as I grow in Freemasonry. Sometimes the degrees mean something different. I, I've spoken to Masons that have been around for 50 or 60 years. And they say that, you know, they've seen the first degree hundreds of times and that, you know, every time they see it, something else pops up for them and they get something out of it or, or it triggers, you know, something. So, you know, we have a, a word, one of the words we use in our ritual, in the York ritual, we say inculcation, right? Which means to learn by repetition. And so by doing this over and over, it kind of creates like grooves in your neural pathways in your brain, in your consciousness. And I think that what happens is, and, you know, I'm not divulging anything by saying that I think that by the later half of the, of the degree, the candidates are literally so overwhelmed with uh, with what's happening and an insensory overload that literally in a state of hypnosis at that point was the end. Now, you can look in their eyes, their eyes are clear at eye. And, you know, if you know anything about hypnotherapy, at that moment, all the lectures, the Q's and A's, the whys and wherefores, uh, the history lecture, all those things, or if it's the middle chamber, if you're, you know, and and in, the, in that degree, and it's at that point, you're so over, you're in sensory overload. All the information is going right inside you, bypassing the ego. And so what I, what I think happens is that later on, when you're seeing the degrees uh, at another lodge, or you're, you're studying for one, you're participating, or, you, or while doing it, or if you're at a lecture or reading a Masonic book, all of a sudden, something will trigger, and then you'll have a major epiphany. You'll read The Meaning of Masonry by Wilmers, and all of a sudden it'll trigger memories of the first degree, and it'll just ignite something and awaken something inside you. I know this happens to me and most of the brothers I speak to. And so, enlightenment. You know, I think we have to talk about it in many different ways. Um, in some ways, raising your vibrations to the highest you can get is a big part of becoming enlightened. But also, you can only become enlightened equal to the lack of emotional blocks you have inside you. Emotional blocks are the emotions that are the feelings that haven't been processed that kind of block your source consciousness emanating from your deep center, you know, your God consciousness that block them. Psychologists talk about getting to a place with patients where once they resolve most of their emotional blocks, there's just kind of like a calm 
and a gentleness and a, a confidence and a, a peace that comes over them. You know, it happens over time. You know, it happens in monasteries and religious organizations. At certain points, the person stops fighting internally, mentally and emotionally. And they're, they're kind of really at peace. I'm not there yet, by the way. Uh, external act, 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 actualization. Very important for me because I don't think it's all about meditating or psychotherapy or doing internal you know, analysis. I think that's extremely important and extremely uh, lacking in our society. But I think it's also about external actualization. So what, is, what do I mean by that? I think it's about really making things happen, it's contributing to society. You know, um, some brothers, all they want to do is read esoteric books, but they don't want to be the master of the lodge. They don't want to help out. They don't want to show up all the time. They don't want to make a commitment the lodge you know and so that in itself is evidence of really emotional blocks or uh psychological you know programs uh that are not um in coherence with you know becoming enlightened and so if you notice all the greatest most enlightened people of history have done absolutely earth-shattering you know things because i don't think you could do one without the other so and it's all about reaching higher consciousness. And so um, one of the most important and famous symbols you will see in Freemasonry, undoubtedly, is the symbol of the temple. And when we get to the symbol of the temple, you may have a realization that you are actually the material and you're the builder working in the material. And that is very profound. And so Freemasonry leads a man through two great obstacles to self-actualization. One is tyranny, one is superstition. And so you really, in order to become enlightened, you must not only know the secret, but you have to enlighten the world also. One cannot go without the other. Freemasonry frees both the man and mankind. All right, so if that's if you feel that's too bold, well let's 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 look at that. Okay, because there's no question that there would be no United States or America without Freemasonry. And the six great revolutions, and history defines them as great revolutions. They took power from tyrants and gave them back to the people. All of them were led by Freemasons. Today, our greatest challenge is to recognize the pain caused by our complacency, brought on by the hard-won freedom from those that came before us. In the Buddhist tradition, the Bodhisattva, takes an obligation that even if he becomes enlightened and earns the right to go into nirvana, it will choose not to. It will choose pain and suffering of rebirth and death again and again for all sentient beings. In the Zohar, in the Kabbalah, it says that the original human, Adam Kadman, when it realized it was being loved infinitely by God and didn't earn it, in a moment of shame, pulled away from God and exploded into 600,000 particles of light. And so all these particles of light have grown to be the 7 billion lights we see on this planet. Every person has a soul of light. And we are actually one person trying to collect back together the light, to come back together to become one, in God. So things like the American Revolution was a profound external actualization that's leading all to what hopefully evolution and God consciousness is leading us to. And so the secrets of Freemasonry are hidden in plain sight. They are so in plain sight. <laughs> It's literally on the petition. Do you believe in the existence of one ever-living true God? 
do you believe in the immortality of the soul? It's right on the bit. <laughs> so the royal secret, what is the royal secret? And how can I say the royal secret here without getting uh, kicked out of the fraternity? All right. I'll say it this way. The Lord is in his holy temple. And you are the temple. And when you know that, you know enough. Thank you, my brothers, for listening to me and attending this lecture. Thank you, Worshipful LaRocco. Um, it's always best when you speak from your own experience. And thank you for saying that this was your story in the beginning and telling your story, which I know is personal and not unlike each of our other stories. Um, I, I, I went to somebody today and uh, for, an, for an acupressure treatment and we talked about vibration and um, you know, the, the, the final thing that you wrapped it up with about um, you being the temple, I mean, this is the kind of things that people say um, in the exercise world, you know, take care of your body, it is your temple. Yep. Um, does uh, we'll open it up to any questions? Uh, Oh, where's my, there it is. Am I onto something or am I on something? <laughs> yeah, there you go. So anybody can unmute and ask questions. I guess you did a great job, Mel. Oh, Max, unmute. I want to express my gratitude to hear a wonderful presentation uh, to Brother Michael. Thank you, Brother Michael. It was a, a beautiful presentation of today. Um, you mentioned uh, many materials to contribute the study of, uh, of the formation of the Masons. One is the Sohar, a um, beautiful book. It's a, a big material to study Kabbalah. Um, and also the relation with the spiritual way, the temple. That question that I will do is a, like a reflection in this moment that we are living in the pandemic moment. Mm -hmm. The material temple right now is not any more use, uh, useful. Right now, I think that we are going to the spiritual level because uh, we don't need to be in the material temple to, co to connect in the different brothers. Right now, I am in Houston, um, but for the magic of the technology, we are living in a spiritual level and to connect between them. My question is, what is happening in the next 10 years, in the next 20 years? The material temple will disappear in the, in the Masons groups? What, where, where are we going in the future? Um, I think uh, we'll be meeting again in person soon, whether that's a few months or several months. Um, and I think, and I hope that we keep Zoom because um, the pandemic has been extraordinarily difficult for so many. I mean, many lost their lives, um, which is the ultimate sacrifice. But one of the positive things that can have come out of it is so many Zoom meetings where brothers come together. I, I've been on Zoom meetings with brothers from all over the world. And so what that has done to my heart and my soul, uh, uh, the edification of communicating so powerfully, so strongly, so 
consistently how beautiful Freemasonry really is and how we all um, have the same kind of standards and belief system has blown me away. I don't know where this is going. I don't know if there's going to be another pandemic in two years. I don't know if we're heading for extremely hard times or things are going to get back to normal rapidly. Um, I don't know. I do know that for myself, I need to keep pulling myself out of no matter what happens outside of my soul, no matter what happens, how great, how fantastic, how fun, how loving, or how treacherous, no matter what's going on outside of me, I, for one, try to practice to live and communicate with the creator within me to try to figure out how to not let the outside forces affect the inside forces, which I believe is what we do when we open and close a meeting, is we, we create a sacred space and we create this barrier. And so I would say that if we're in for some incredibly hard times, because it's very possible that things are not going to get better, they're going to get much worse than anyone could possibly imagine. All I could say is no matter how, how bad they can get, we can adapt anything. And if we can't adapt to something and it kills us, well, then we know as Freemasons, we are citizens of two worlds. The most repeated phrase in the Masonic funeral is there is no death. And so it is my belief that the immortality of the soul is the second highest reality that can be communicated to any sentient being. And so if we truly are immortal, we're not going to run out in the street and get hit by a car. We're not that stupid. You know, we're not going to give that amazing gift away so easily. But ultimately, I think we should be men that would sacrifice our life if we needed to in the service of God, the truth, or helping another human being. Because, because, because we know our soul is immortal. And what we do here affects what happens afterwards. And so I think we all myself included, need to develop a rock, solid, unconquerable faith in God and walk with strength and the confidence, uh, knowing that no matter what happens, either I'm going to handle it with my brothers or I'm not, and it's going to kill me. Either case, it, it's a good outcome. There is no bad outcome. Either I get through it and survive and become stronger, or I die, and I'm immortal anyway. And so, does that answer your question at all? I feel like maybe I went off. You could press the, the space bar down. I, I, I think it's is, is okay. Um, but I think there is a, another brother who wants to continue asking. But maybe if I have time, we will continue in this discussion. It's a beautiful topic. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Max Mel. Yeah, uh, Brother Michael, uh, you mentioned three things that seem to have uh, steered you in the, in the right direction in your life. One of them was the Zohar, as, as Brother Max has alluded to. Uh, I tried studying that, and it's very complicated. And I had to give it up because I didn't have the, the background. When you started studying, you, you must have gotten involved in Zohar. So I'm going to ask you, what kind of material did you use to, to get a basic understanding of, of the Zohar itself? Um, I, I'll tell you the truth. I, uh, the, the, the only source for me was looking at YouTube videos from Daniel Matt on YouTube. He was the guy that actually translated it into English. Uh -huh. So um, I found that when I listen to some speakers or teachers on Kabbalah, sometimes I get turned off. And sometimes I listen to some speakers of Kabbalah and my soul lights up. Yeah. And so when yeah. he speaks, my soul lights up. Yeah, that, that reminds me of what my rabbi had told me when I mentioned that Madonna was studying the Zohar. He said, she's not studying the Zohar. You know, she's studying something, but, but not Zohar. So yeah, there's a lot of ways to, to get into this and you can go off on the, on the wrong path 
sometimes, even well, though we, you want enlightenment. So you, we you don't have to find ways to keep yourself uh, going in the right direction. You're right. Many have gone into madness trying to figure it out. Right? Yep. That's actually a fact. What was the name of that person with the YouTube videos? Daniel Matt. M-A-T-T? M-A-T-T, yeah. Okay. I think Jay had a question. I had more of a comment than a question. I happened to be at, at, at a 14th degree last night and you, you did mention that. And it was very interesting and it, it just brought it all up for me. I, 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 was, I was not just at it, I was a participant in it. I was one of the, 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 the I, I played a role, if you will, in it. And I was there. I know, I know, I know. And it was it, it was a great it was a great experience it it really was and and so many of the things that you mentioned I mean you, you talk about like the, the Zoom and 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 what a great thing it's been for in, in your opinion in 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 for masonry and I and I would agree it, it it's enabled me to be in lodge with with my brothers as I normally would it's enabled me to be in lodge with people on the other side of the world I I I would I was at a, a presentation at in a lodge in, in, in Auckland about six months ago. And it was, it was great. It was great. And, and I also get to participate with brothers that, um, on a weekly basis. I, I, I'm in a group of Jewish Masons. And so we, we have our meetings on a weekly basis and it's great. You know, we, we talk about all sorts of things relating Freemasonry to Judaism. And it, 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 it's just wonderful to be able to do this. And, and connect with everyone, either from, you know, your dining room or in a lodge room. I think, I think it's great. I, th I, I, I hope it continues so that we have this opportunity to continue connecting and relating to each other. So thank you, thank you for mentioning stuff. I, I, I like it a lot. And thank you for, for last night, it was great. My pleasure. Other questions, comments? Okay, thank you, Michael. Uh, I've got a big smile on my face and I look forward to uh, the next time we speak and uh, ag again, being in the same room as you. Same here, brother. Thank you, Worshipful Master, for inviting me.